All right, now we come to a, a new uh, lesson. And this lesson will describe one of these uh, subgroups, the definitions and taxonomies, taxonomy subgroups. And um, this actually is meant to tell you what all these words mean. I pointed out that one of the problems with big data and also data science is that it's not so obvious that people agree what, it, what they are. And so they're trying to um, understand these big words and also to go into a little more detail about the components that uh, are brought together in these concepts. And there's a very detailed thought and analysis that will be published after this process goes through the uh, technical editing and things like that. It will also, it not only looks at the words, it also looks at the stakeholders and the actors. And um, so that we can actually talk coherently with a common vocabulary across different architectures and different applications. And of course, the um, definitions and taxonomies require compiling ideas from various sources, trying to reconcile them and get some consensus definition. Taxonomies require making lists and uh, making certain that all possibilities are covered. And then trying to put some hierarchical order on them in terms of components and subcomponents. Interestingly, I found, I, it's, it appeared to me there was more agreement on what data science was than there is on what big data is. So big data, as I said, is sometimes defined by the Vs, of which the uh, most common Vs are three, volume, velocity, and variety. Um, and these, um, and the bigness is the bigness of this. So this is says you can actually have a small volume. But if you have high velocity, and you keep, it gets updated very quickly, or very rich variety, then it can still be effectively big data, because the processing problem is big, if you have a very complex uh, data um, source. Um, but as I say, I think probably more important than bigness is impact, namely, is this data really allowing new approaches to critical questions which were not possible to do using traditional methods, such as simulations or what you might call pure observation, the Newton's apple idea. And of course, the bigness comes when they need uh, more data than you have on your disk system, or they need more computing than you have in your cluster. And um, of course, uh, one of the reasons we have big data is we're able through the internet to get large <coughs> populations of various data sources. And um, the management techniques need to scale. Namely, they have to have horizontal means that uh, you have a lot of things. You, rep you get uh, increase in size, not by making each unit much bigger and each unit each bigger and bigger, but by just having more and more units. Um, and so you need to be able to manage this whole process with this scaling and the number of the units uh, works out. So here is a, so I think there was more agreement here than on that previous slide, a definition of data science. There is a picture which um, shows the various things are brought together in data science. There's research, there's applic application in the informatics, the X and X informatics, that's the main expertise. We have an analytics, and here we have the integrating idea of data science in the middle. Analytics involves algorithms and applied mathematics and convergence and rigorous things. This all is very closely related to statistics. And data mining, they're, they're sort of the same thing looked at by, from different points of view. And of course, all has to be programmed. So these are the types of skills that data scientists might, can, can need. And always in these interdisciplinary approach, you always have this um, trade-off. Um, when you need to bring 10 skills to a problem, do you hire 10 people, each with one skill? 
more than you are one person with ten skills. Jack of all trades or several masters of an individual trade. And probably you could say that to lead all of this, you probably better have a jack of all trades, because only a jack of all trades could bring this diverse group together. But if you have a big enough team, you're going to have specialists and generalists. The generalist being this um, idealized data scientist to find here who has got sufficient knowledge of all these regimes and sufficient expertise and the final needs of the, well here the, you see it says business needs, it could say science or research needs. And let me ask the master all these circles on the right. And it has to be able to do all of this. Now that's a pretty good person to have, but my bet is that you don't have so many of those. And anyway, most of the ones you have will actually you know, have a specialization. Maybe they're super good at analytics or statistics or whizzes of programming. But they might still have significant knowledge of all the, I mean, so you can have somebody who's very good at one of these circles or one of these regions and, and um, pretty good at the rest. That's a data scientist. Here are the, um, Actors and the roles, actors are the components we need to bring together uh, to do a big data system. The applications, the software subsystems, the sensors, the people, the organization, the various services. I mean, he says service abstractions. An important concept of services are they have to have abstractions. Because services are black boxes that receive information, data, and control and give out information, data, and control. And to have an abstraction as to what that service does is pretty important in allowing people to have a service ecosystem where different people build different services or different people compete to build the same service. We look at the various roles. We have the provider of data, the consumer of data. Uh, these are not, these roles are not particularly people, they could have involved people, but they could involve computers and software and things like that. We have the orchestrator, which puts everything together. We have the application provider and the framework provider. So um, where the application provider, if you like, runs on the framework provider, or the pr framework provided by the framework provider.